Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some good stuff. Uh, first up, multiple Bitcoin theories arrive at the same conclusion. I'd like to take a look at this to see where we are potentially at right now and where we could be. And I got to tell you, everything points to Bitcoin at six figures. Also, the IMF publishes Cryptocurrency Explainer saying it could be the next step in the evolution of money. And I have to tell you that uh, when the International Monetary Fund, or IMF, gets into the fray of putting out commercials for a cryptocurrency, there's only one thing I can say, mass adoption. And lastly, we'll go over a disturbing trend that I see more and more uh, that has to do with exchanges and wallets. This will lead us into question of the day from Massive Crypto. But first, let's take a look at the market. So today it is August 24th. It is about almost high noon Texas time. And uh, let's see what we got. So uh, first up, Bitcoin, a little bit below 12K. What a bummer. 1% up though at 1175. So I'm pretty happy with that. Ethereum, I'm very happy with this. It broke over $400 again. I gotta tell you, if it can just keep 400 uh, consistently, I think it's gonna do great things. Uh, there is a um, uh, Ethereum fees, which has been on the rise. However, thankfully, only say go stepped in and uh, took over some of the fee issue. So uh, if you're transferring Ethereum, not so bad right now. And I'm thankful for that. Uh, XRP, 28 cents, watch out, never changes. I gotta tell you, I don't know what the difference between, between XRP and Tether is, besides the obvious, right? Um, it just seems to be there now i know everybody talks about well xrp is going to pump real great it's, good. it's the last one to pump it's awesome just waiting anyhow chain link uh took a little bit of a uh, pushback uh, a little bit of a retraction down to 15.15 after its uh, all-time high of around 20 dollars and 10 cents but it is up 1.6 percent but 20 percent for the week so hey what are you gonna do you had a great run chain link Bitcoin Cash up 2.7, Litecoin, and our new darling of the industry, Polkadot, up 17.8%. If you notice one thing, the seven-day average is not here, and you know why? It's because it hasn't been out for seven days, and it's already in the top 10. Actually, it's number eight, so congratulations to all you Polkadot holders. Uh, I did not uh, get on that one. I uh, just uh, didn't really want to do it. I got to tell you, there's something fantastic and new coming out every every week, it seems like, but I pass on this one. Uh, maybe I should have got it, but uh, hey, can't win them all, right? So uh, for all you holders, congratulations, tip of the hat. And uh, you're at 443, maybe you hit five today, who knows? Cardano slipping a little bit at 12 cents, but it is up 1.6 and uh, down we go. Tezos up 7%, happy about that. Anything fantastic and ooh, Abe eight, up 28%. So all you DeFi fans, congratulations. All right, let's uh, break into today's top stories. So first up, uh, multiple Bitcoin theories arrive at the same conclusion. Uh, which is essentially Bitcoin's going to rise. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much it. But uh, it's interesting to see like how much it's going to rise to and how long it's going to take. And I got to tell you, I'm investing into Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Cardano, Chainlink, uh, Tezos, um, VeChain, Theta. I, I have a, a lot of investment. As I was going through this and I was looking at the different news articles, I'm just going to tell you bias that creeps into you. I've held I've held Bitcoin now for over three years, and there was a couple of articles about what I thought was polka dot, and um, I was like I'm just going to glance over that. I'm going to go to the Bitcoin one, and it's because I own Bitcoin. So when I talk about these things, you got to understand it's because I'm biased. I mean I try not to be on this news channel, but it just sinks in. And then I was looking through the thing. I'm like, oh, it's not about polka. It was some it was something else. Um, pocket uh, something about Pocket, some um, lending platform, but. I thought to myself, I'm like, wow, I'm becoming one of those people that is, you know, biased towards Bitcoin. And I got to tell you, you got to watch out for that because if you sit back uh, and look at these Bitcoin maximalists who have been in, you know, five, six, seven, sometimes like, you know, plus years, uh, you just look at them like, what are you talking about? Are, are, do you really think that Bitcoin is really the only one? It's because they've been so ingrained in their head and just pounded and pounded and pounded that it's just, it just looks ridiculous uh, coming from the outside in. So what I'm going to start doing is uh, trying to branch out and look at some other projects. I may, And I probably won't invest into them, or I, maybe I will, I don't know. But uh, you can't sit around and just you know be in your own echo chamber. It just doesn't work like that. you got to get out there and look at new things. Anyhow, let's break into this, this article here. So Bitcoin, is, there's different theories about when Bitcoin is going to pop off and what's going to happen. And one of those is the four-year cycle. And it's one that I actually subscribe to. It, it makes sense to me. Um, they talk about the four-year cycle theory, states that 
Bitcoin moves in four-year cycles with 200 weekly moving average acting as a support. And you can just kind of see it right here in this little um, graph uh, all the way back in 2010, 2011. And it's kind of, you know, moves in the same type of pattern. A little parabolic, a little drop. Then a little uh, uh, gain, a little pullback, and then a parabolic, and then drop, and then kind of like sideways action, parabolic, drop. And uh, I think we're going to see that again, but who knows. Anyhow, it says the reason why the four-year cycle theory fails is due to the lengthening Bitcoin cycles. And this is interesting. The first Bitcoin cycle lasted for 400 days, within which the bull market lasted for 250 days. Second cycle lasted for uh, over a thousand days. And the third one is on its way and already 623 days have passed. So I don't really subscribe to that theory right there uh, because, I mean, if you just take a look at it, it's pretty plain as day. Um, you know, there's just, there's some sideways action, parabolic run, drop off. Little, you know, sideways action, parabolic run, drop off. And we're just going, we're going in the way that we all want it to go, which is straight up. Well, not straight up, but you know, up in that in that sense. Uh, moving on, it says based on ROI cycles, the price of bottom will hit peak somewhere in late 2022, and estimates uh, the cycle to last almost 1,760 days. That leaves 703 days for Bitcoin to hit its peak, and it's the same type of thing that we just saw, but a little bit of uh, you know variance. So sure. Coincidentally, this also falls in line with the popular controversial Plan B's stock-to-flow ratio. Both models come to a similar conclusion regarding Bitcoin's top that one Bitcoin will be equal to 100,000 by 2022. So I got to tell you, when I when I read this, it's the same thing that I had talked about before. Um, and if you've ever watched my exit strategy, I talk about well, if we just look at you know how long it takes from the the, the drop off to the next parabolic bull run. Yeah, you're you're looking at certain time frame, and I said, yeah, I mean, it could probably be 2022 is when we see you know Bitcoin pop off. And I got to tell you, uh, for me, when I when I see other different um, scenarios play that out, I'm like, this is fantastic. Imagine we have all this time to accumulate Bitcoin, and it might go below 10. I mean, who knows? I mean, it could blow, go below 10,000. Everybody says the same nonsense. This is the last time you see Bitcoin below $10,000. Well, guess how many times that's happened? I mean, look, I saw it before 4,000. If you were here in March, you saw this, this, the exact same thing. So, but uh, imagine this you're able to just accumulate and accumulate, accumulate for two years to an asset that's going to hit 100,000 plus. Let that sink in for a second. All you got to do is just dollar cost average. You don't have to dump in a thousand, you know, when you get a thousand dollars and dump it all in. Just dollar cost average. Every week or every three days or every two weeks, whatever it is, you put in a hundred bucks, twenty-five bucks, ten bucks. I don't know, whatever it is, and then it's going to go up ten x over the next two years. Now, this is not financial advice and all that stuff, but I got to tell you, I have no doubt it will hit that. I'm going to show you why in a second. So now you talk about a new narrative. Uh, which is the ROI cycle theory still needs to be disproved where they're talking about, you know, hey, so far, Bitcoin has not only held up its narrative for being an uncorrelated asset, but also has had a higher ROI than most. Let me tell you, it is the it is the best performing asset in the last decade. It has beat every stock. It has beat gold. It has beat silver. It has beat the S&P 500. It has beat the pants off them for the last decade. There's a video that I did. You can check it out. I will link it at the very end. So when I say it's been a, a higher ROI than most, you know, that's that's true. It's just been the best of most. In fact, using Bitcoin's network momentum chart, it can be seen that Bitcoin is going through an extended momentum phase. I got to tell you, so when I'm looking at this, I think to myself, okay, well, you have this 2010 sideways, little little bull run here. Then you have this bull market lasting from 2013, 2014. Then the drop off, and then it starts to gain momentum. Then another bull market, which we saw, which is pretty nice. And then we saw a big drop off, and then everything uh, trades sideways for a bit, goes up and down, but it's momentum. But if it's talking about Bitcoin going through an extended momentum phase, you know what that means? Everything's coiling up tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. And what happens when you coil up to a uh, maximum pressure? Well, you spring off to the roof. So when we're talking about these different types of uh, scenarios that could happen, the longer that we're in these momentum phases, as they say, or it coils up, like I say, I think the higher the trajectory of cryptocurrency. And it's not just Bitcoin I'm talking about. It's not like Bitcoin's going to go to, you know, 200,000 and then, uh, you know, Ethereum's going to be at 423 or something crazy like that. 
it all goes up and I'm happy with that. So hopefully that actually happens. But finishing up, it says a fascinating observation is that most of the models and predictions point towards the price of Bitcoin in six figures. And again, I have no doubt. So this is the same thing I had talked about in my uh, bull run. I just took a look at dates and I said, okay, well, if, if the first halving was on 2012, that was the very first halving or having Bitcoin ever had. And from 2012, it hit its all time high on December 2nd, 2013. And it took 369 days, almost a, almost a year to the spot. And the price of the having on 2012 was 12 bucks. Imagine 12 bucks for Bitcoin. And then in a year's time, it went up to a thousand dollars, which would still be pretty awesome, right? So you almost hit 8,000% increase. That will be awesome. And that's those people who, were back then those are the bitcoin maximalists right that were around that time i mean there's still some coming around but uh i mean why wouldn't you be maximalist like <laughs> this is awesome but you gotta understand there's more assets out there and it's not just bitcoin we're not just talking about cryptocurrency we're talking about digital assets and all the things that they can do so if we take a look at the second halving this was more interesting so it's second halving it happened on july 2016 and then a year and a half later on december 16 2017 it hit its all-time high. So the price of the halving on July 9th, 2016 was $650. And then a year and a half later, it was almost $20,000. So what happened here? So you take 8,000%, it went to 3,000%. So that's about a third. So, you know, round numbers, you know, about a third. Okay. So now if we take a look at the third halving. We had it in May, 2020. And if we go from just the time frames, one year, year and a half, maybe two years makes sense right so from the date of the having it was about ten thousand that's what i predicted it was around ten thousand dollars i was like well i think it's going to be that and it kind of worked out like that so what what could be the all-time high well if we think about two years 2022 uh we could do a hundred thousand why a hundred thousand because if we went from eight thousand to three thousand yeah so it's about a third so we do a third of that a thousand percent of ten thousand hundred thousand dollars and that's just my conservative look at it, right? Uh, if you want to take a look at Tim Draper, he's like, no, 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 it's going to go the exact opposite. Op opposite. It's going to be a year, a year and a half. It's going to jump and it's going to hit in a year. So in 2021, we're not going to go down by a third. We're going to go up by a third. And it's going to be 4,500% and we're going to hit 450,000. Actually, he says around 250,000, but uh, whatever you want to do. I Honestly, between me and you, uh, I don't care if it goes 100,000 or 250,000 still a lot of money and all this time that me and you have got a chance to actually accumulate sky's the limit right so uh that's just my thoughts let me know what you think in the comment section let's move on all right so next up imf publishes cryptocurrency explainer and it's a commercial which is uh which was pretty amazing to me now if you're new to um you know cryptocurrency digital assets or even finance what is the imf well the imf itself is an international organization, which already sounds uh, kind of ominous, headquartered in Washington, D.C., consisting of 189 countries working to foster global monetary cooperation, secure financial stability, facilitate international trade, promote high employment and sustainable economic growth and reduce poverty around the world. So basically what the IMF does is it sets the economic policy for the global economy. So this is a, uh, a pretty big organization, I would say and what they actually are talking about or are pushing usually pulls a lot of weight and what are they pushing right now it's cryptocurrencies so uh, when i saw this i was like well this is game over um, and i'm going to show you why so let's just scroll down the imf tweeted a video explaining what cryptocurrency is on sunday that instantly went viral referring to cryptocurrency as a special currency the two-minute video attempts to outline its benefits removing middlemen, lowering costs, and increasing transaction speed. So I'm not going to get into the weeds of that. So let's just watch the video and uh, I'll have you make the judgment. When we buy or sell things, the payment is usually processed by a bank or credit card company. Problem number one, the companies often take a cut of the transaction. Two, we have to trust these companies to protect our sensitive data from hackers. Three, most international payments take a long time and are expensive. To solve these problems, we could use a special currency that is secure and based on the science of cryptography, which is a way of protecting information using mathematics. This special type of currency is called a cryptocurrency, 
and only exists in computer networks. When you send someone the special currency, the money goes directly to them, removing the middleman. And at the same time, the transactions broadcast to the entire network and recorded in a permanent way, which means it's almost impossible to fool the system. Costs of making payments are lower, transactions are faster, especially across countries, and even those people around the globe who don't have bank accounts can buy or sell goods and participate in the global economy. However, there are some risks. The transactions in most cryptocurrencies are anonymous. Some cryptocurrencies can even be untraceable. This can make it easier for the bad guys to make payments without being noticed. If you lose your password, you could lose all your money. At the moment, cryptocurrencies are highly volatile. They can't process large amounts of transactions quickly yet, and they're not even widely accepted. But if we can counter the risks, then this new technology or some variation of it can completely change the way we sell, buy, save, invest, and pay our bills. And who knows, this could be the next step in the evolution of money. Okay, pretty interesting stuff right there. But uh, two things stood out to me. One, they kept talking about special currency, special currency, special currency. And I can tell you right now, uh, the IMF are no slouches. They've probably done a ton of research, a ton of analytics, and they have found the exact phrase that will work to let the uh, entire populace digest easily the type of information that they are throwing out. And this happens throughout all types of marketing, all types of corporations, even up to the highest levels of government. In government, they do all these polls, all this research to find out what is the best way to say certain things so that people will accept them easily. Case in point, uh, years ago, we used to talk about nationalized medicine. Okay, we're gonna have nationalized medicine. In America, we don't have nationalized medicine. Uh, it's all purchased through insurance companies for our healthcare. So we don't just pay into it. Uh, that is just how uh, healthcare works in America. So they try to get nationalized medicine and they kept saying that and people hated it because they're like, we're Americans. We're not going to go to something like in Europe or Australia or wherever else. We are this certain way and this is all we want. However, what they did was they did a ton of research and analytics and they said, you know what? Instead of saying that, you know, Senator, whoever, or Congressman, whoever, you're going to say Medicare for all. It's the exact same thing as far as a nationalized medicine plan uh, or, man or nationalized healthcare, but just say Medicare for all. And guess what? It went from 10% acceptance to over 60% acceptance when people started to talk about it. Amazing, the exact same thing. So what's happening here with the IMF, they're doing the exact same procedure. And when you start hearing things about special currency, special currency, you're gonna hear that term over the next one to three years and you're gonna get sick of it. Second thing I found interesting was that they pretty much just laid it out and said, look, this is what we're going to actually push as far as cryptocurrency digital assets. And they are these three things. And it is Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. Now, look, I don't know why they have these particular ones, but they put it in the commercial. They've alluded to it in different uh, interviews throughout the internet. So these are the big three. And Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, sure, great. Um, I don't know what you are into, um, but I will tell you this. I've invested heavily into Bitcoin, heavily invested in Ethereum. XRP, I used to invest in heavily. I do not anymore. I have my positions, but I gotta tell you something. When the International Monetary Fund is is putting out a commercial and they're telling you exactly the three that they're pushing these are something that you might want to look into and maybe carry not financial advice but i gotta tell you imf is in a lot of countries it is global it pushes the economic policy so just something to think about all right that is it for that let's move on to question of the day and last up uh, for the question of the day this comes to us from massive crypto and he i see this disturbing trend uh, about wallets and exchanges so let's jump in the office so, hello everybody and welcome back to the office for another q of the day and this was uh, one of those concerning questions that i got that i thought uh, this would be a good one uh, for to answer uh, live or you know recorded so this one comes to me from massive crypto. Uh, I had subscribed to your YouTube and use your links for uh, opening up exchanges. Voyeur has been good, but sometimes their holds are uh, a bit too long. So uh, my real problem just started with uh, crypto.com about two weeks ago. I was trying to buy crypto on their platform using my uh, US dollars that I had currently on their exchange. But every time I try to use it to buy coins, it keeps saying unexpected error occurred. I've sent more than 10 emails to their customer support and they don't respond back to me. Uh, what are your recommendations that I should do? Appreciate a quick response, I'm very worried. So here's the thing uh, about all these different exchanges and whatnot. Um, 
We had done a, a Q&A session with uh, Stephen uh, Ehrlich. He was the uh, CEO of Voyager. We got on the channel to answer specific questions. And ever since then, I have been getting bombarded with like, hey, I'm using this exchange and that exchange and this wallet, and they don't get back to me. So could you reach out to them? Look, uh, I can only do so much uh, as far as these different exchanges and, and whatever else. When we have problems, I can always reach out to them and like ask them you know, the, the questions and, and bring people on. Uh, but you got to work the system. And uh, here, uh, the system is looks like it's already been worked. You know, he's done 10 emails. So the, the question that I had for him was, you know, massive, which was, you know, when was your first email and when was your last email that you put out? If you sent them 10 emails in uh, yesterday, then, you know, you got to give them time to, to respond and see what they do. But I will say this, um, I have seen an uptick of problems with all of the exchanges, every single exchange and every th single wallet, because I get emails all day long about this wallet's not doing this and this exchange isn't doing this. And it's, it's concerning, but I think what's happening is, is growing pains. And I'll tell you what I mean. As things start to really take off, uh, we saw a massive uh, blast off in 2017. Uh, exchanges were just shutting down. They weren't letting people in. You couldn't do anything about it. Uh, people were selling their uh, Binance accounts with nothing in it for like thousands of dollars just so people could have an account and actually start trading, which I thought was ridiculous and stupid, but what are you gonna do? So um, when these things start to happen, you start to see like a little bit of a bull run, a little bit of an uptick, a little bit more of sales, and you see like massive things start, not even massive things, just like a, a little bit of a tidal wave coming in, you start to see these issues coming about. Now, this is the problem with being in this space. If it was easy, everybody would do it. And, you know, we talked about uh, these other parts on, on today's episode. But when you have these issues, uh, you're just going to have to work the system. Now, if it's something like, you know, you have like a specific question like, hey, can you reach out to them? I will reach out to them and I will say, hey, this is what's going on. But uh, I will just say this. Uh, every single one has had an issue in some way, shape or form. And uh, like people know that I really like Voyager. So, you know, they always reach out to me when they have a Voyager problem. And I say the same thing. Reach out to them, send them an email, give them 24 to 48 hours to respond. And usually these things get, get taken care of. Um, I know there was one part where someone had stated in, in Twitter, said, hey, they have uh, increased the um, uh, transfer fees by like 6x. So if you want to transfer any type of cryptocurrency from Voyager to your wallet, they bumped it up by 6x. And I was like, what? That doesn't make any sense. So I actually transferred one Ethereum from Voyager to my uh, ledger and, uh, or no, actually it was, it, it was from Voyager and I, I sent it to Gemini because uh, it was just super simple. And uh, it was the same, you know, 0.001 or 0.01, I forgot what it was. It, it equal out to like $4, something like that. And that's, this was like last week when the fees for Ethereum was like $3 or something. It was ridiculous. Um, so all I can say is, you know, if you're having problems, try to do Try to do your due diligence and kind of get out there. Now, are all exchanges fantastic? No. I mean, I get emails about exchanges. I'm like, I don't know what the heck that is. I, I'm like, or wallets. I'm like, I have no idea what that is. And there, it seems like there is like a proliferation of that. So all I can just re recommend to you is, is just try to do the safe thing. If it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. And just kind of just sit back and go, is that a real deal? I mean, is that, you know, someplace in like uh, Uzbekistan? that they have an exchange that, you know, uh, the interest rates are, are super low and they give you loans, whatever else you're like, eh, maybe not. So, so uh, that's all I can say. If you're looking for uh, alternatives, look in the description. There is the uh, uh, Coinbase alternatives uh, spreadsheet. Just give that, a, give that a go. And then uh, if you have something majorly happen where you've worked the system and you're like, I can't do this, then definitely reach out to me. I will reach out to the exchange and we'll just, or wallet or whatever else and we'll just have a little dialogue with them and bring them on the show because usually that kind of helps. <laughs> when you got somebody, when you have a channel where you know you, you get like 10, 20, 30,000 views, usually they, see, they seem to respond a little bit, so that's all I'm saying. All right, um, so that's it for today. Uh, let's, uh, let's jump back. All right, so that's it. Hope that uh, helped out a little bit. Uh, but um, before we take off, I want to give you some random shout outs. If you don't know, there's a join now button underneath and it doesn't give you anything special. It's just a buck 99 and uh, you get access to uh, me just doing random shout outs. That's it. So first up, uh, 
Keith, Susan, thanks for signing up. Appreciate it. It's uh, Lincoln Echo, uh, Banast, Bun, Mark, DJ Hausa, David Mills, and Timothy Dillon. So thanks so much for signing up. I really appreciate it. If you like those videos, I mean, two more is going to show up on your left and right. I don't know how that works because uh, YouTube has control of that. And uh, that's it for today. So uh, thanks for sticking with me. Really appreciate it. And uh, I will see you on the